Best horror movies of all time like to keep you guessing. Those who say they can't watch scary movies like to say that they're all full of blood, violence, and nastiness. But the truth is, some of the scariest films ever don't have any of those things. For instance, the closest the Blair Witch Project gets to gore is a momentary glimpse into a twiggy parcel that might be teeth. Regardless of what they show, the way horror films make us feel is a true measure of just how scary they really are. And while of course some use different scare tactics such as demonic possessions and chainsaws to reinforce their message, others are equally devastating by merely having the telephone ring. The Blair Witch Project The Blair Witch Project takes a creative twist to the definition of horror movies, particularly the founder footage genre. Watching a trio of young people slowly giving way to panic and hysteria while being lost in the woods with a mysterious entity is what makes the film so scary. The first few minutes are disorientating, deliberately shot with all the shakiness of raw footage from some backpacker's video diary. In the film, we never get to see the titular villain or whatever malevolent entity is residing in the woods, but it forces the viewer to use their imagination, which is much scarier than anything that could ever be shown on screen. This is a good example of a horror film that does not rely on special effects and jump scares. It slowly builds up pure psychological terror instead. Directed by Daniel Merrick and Eduardo Sanchez, The Blair Witch Project is most notable for its influence on the horror genre. While it introduced a wave of low-budget found footage horror films that would prove to be wildly successful, The Blair Witch Project still stands out today among the others for its legacy and cultural phenomenon. Insidious in Insidious, the Lambert family settles into their new house, only to find weird things are happening. Books and boxes move around, and there's a weird noise coming from the attic. Before long, son Dalton falls into a mysterious coma, and mom Renee starts seeing things. The father, Josh, agrees to move them out of the seemingly haunted house, but the strange events continue. Insidious is jam-packed with scares. Some of them are jump scares. The characters, which include the aforementioned Lambert family and the psychic Elise, are relatable. Insidious is one of the most terrifying scary movies in some time, and it's not recommended for anyone without a high tolerance for jump scares. There's some blood, as well as some arguing and yelling, and a young boy is in jeopardy, which may add to the anxiety for some younger audiences. But most of the horror is in the form of stuff that nightmares are made of. Darkness, shadows, and noises. I tell you, it's very scary. Ringu Hideo Nakata's Ringu could be seen as a film that single-handedly started the J-horror craze of the early 2000s. Nakata fills a film with plenty of nightmarish imagery, creating a spooky atmosphere that spreads through every frame. The film builds an unbearable sense of dread during the protagonist's investigation into the deaths linked to a haunted videotape, then unleashes its horrifying twist when the audience is at its most vulnerable. It's a masterpiece of execution. Only this film can bring the kind of terror that is induced every time a phone rings, and the impotent heart and mouth panic that comes from the protagonist's inability to switch his TV off at the most vital moment. The film blends old school paranoia with modern fears of technology to marvelous effect, leading to one of the most surprising finals in horror history. While it inspired remakes and even a TV series, none of them could match the horror of the original Ringu which already gained cult status all over the world. Keiro Arguably Kiyoshi Kurosawa's most chilling film, Keiro, aka The Pulse, has more on its mind than just a bunch of creepy ghosts. Kurosawa's film is extremely bleak as hell and manages to get under your skin more than a few times. The film portrays death as eternal loneliness. Its commentary on technology, and more specifically the internet, is more relevant today than it was back in 2001. While there is certainly a lot of ghosts in this film, it does not dwell in the bounds of the stereotypical supernatural horror. This film is very disturbing in a way that it shows a bleak atmosphere, depression, loneliness, and at times, suicide. Compare this creeping dread to the ghouls in Ringu and Juong. Those spirits drip with menace and hellish intent, but the ghosts in Cairo are mundane. The film plays on that Japanese belief that the disturbed dead spirits of loved ones hang in the air, omnipresently. There's no singular ghoul to combat in Cairo. 
purgatory is full and the overflowing dead are returning to reality. There may be only several ghosts, or there may be millions. The scale of the horror is beyond us. Paranormal Activity Paranormal Activity was hugely successful when it received a nationwide release in 2009, grossing $193 million worldwide against a $15,000 budget. Made for a very low budget and with minimal actors and settings, this is an effective horror movie that's more dependent on ideas than on a spectacle or gore. Paranormal Activity suggests its terror rather than explicitly showing them, which leaves far more to the imagination, and sends more genuine chills up the spine. The bulk of Paranormal Activity consists of static shots of the lead character's home, but it sure is terrifying. The well-placed daytime scenes are comparatively relaxing as the people in the film try to figure out their dilemma, but the nighttime scenes offer something spookier. The couple sleeps in a static wide shot. The bed, the doorway, and a part of the hallway are visible. The scary part can be a sound or an image, but it can originate from anywhere within the frame. The movie always keeps viewers off guard. The film induces the maximum amount of tension out of the spare modern setting, an ordinary suburban home in San Diego. It doesn't sound very scary, but they manage to make it terrifying. I know that you're finding this list spine chilling, but I am just halfway through it. Don't you dare close your eyes until the end of this video knowing that my top choice is based from a true story. Hereditary Hereditary is a horror masterpiece from the filmmaker Ari Aster, which is well known for its unnerving atmosphere, dread, and drama. Hereditary is a film which will serve as a benchmark for all other films both inside and outside of the horror genre. It is one of the best films in terms of storytelling, more specifically how a filmmaker develops their narrative environment, and characters. Hereditary is a kind of film that does not have a definitive meaning in its plot. It's one that has a direct relationship with each and every viewer who experiences it. Its story is a horrifying and even painful look at a family falling apart. It's dramatic in a way that some scenes would have scared me as a child. You can't unsee some of the scenes thrown at you. Like in the ideal definition of what a good horror film should be, Hereditary does not rely on jump scares. It's a foreboding, brutal build-up to the final moments, and the sense that all the pain and suffering of the characters is preordained. That makes Hereditary one of the most effective works of horror in recent years. Texas Chainsaw Massacre Even though it was given almost nothing for a budget, this movie is better than lots of horror movies today. One of the most controversial horror films of all time, which is interesting considering there is very little blood actually seen in the film. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is unrelenting in its brutality and shocking in its authenticity. Cooper's grimy documentary filming style takes you into the hot Texas summer, delivering an onslaught on the senses that will send you staggering. From the sort of narration at the beginning that makes you feel like you're watching a documentary, to the fact that all the scares happen so suddenly when you least expect them, it does almost feel like it's actually real. The film also introduced Leatherface, one of the most iconic faces of the horror genre. His towering figure is an intimidating presence, one made even more terrifying by Dorothy J. Pearl's outstanding makeup effects. Alien, Ridley Scott's 1979 horror masterpiece. Every part of the film works, from the exceptional sound design to the top-notch performances to H.R. Geiger's creature design to Roger Christensen's outstanding sets, Alien is a very effective horror film. Basically, Alien is a movie about things that can jump out of the dark and kill you. When the ship Nostromo picks up an SOS that suggests a new alien life form, it's contractually bound to investigate. Unfortunately, the SOS turns out to be a warning, and the ship is invaded by a highly evolved monster, searching for human hosts for its offspring. The film begins slowly, with a restrained pace, but once the alien itself is introduced, the movie takes a firm hold as the alien does on its victims. This homicidal monster, which keeps changing shape, is designed to provoke nightmares, with scenes throughout the entire movie which should go down the books as one of the most disgustingly horrifying moments in movies. A Nightmare on Elm Street, a film made by Wes Craven, who is a true master of horror. A Nightmare on Elm Street is a film with an innovative premise that created a slasher icon who helped define the horror genre in the 80s. When it comes to classic horror films, Nightmare on Elm Street is a title that has lasted generations. You may have watched it, 
heard your parents talk about it, or seen it on a list of must-watch horror films. The iconic villain that emerged from the phenomenon is none other than Freddy Krueger, whose burned face still appears on Halloween masks to this day. The focus is on a group of four teens who are having nightmares about a man that is hunting them down, soon realizing these nightmares are more than just a dream. What makes Freddy truly terrifying is that he exists not in the real world, but in the shadowy realm of dreams. And if that isn't enough to put ice in your veins, try this. Craven based the whole thing on a true story. The film stemmed from a series of articles in an LA paper about a group of Southeast Asian kids, all from the same neighborhood, who died mysteriously in their sleep after a string of vivid nightmares. The Exorcist It may be cliché to declare The Exorcist the best horror film of all time, but that's only because it is the best horror film of all time. William Friedkin flawlessly directs this adaptation of William Peter Blatty's 1971 novel, which grounds the more horrific and fantastical elements of the horror genre into a compelling and relatable family drama. Dealing with issues of faith, doubt, and relationship between a mother and her daughter, The Exorcist showed that the horror genre could be taken seriously by general audiences and critics alike. The entire production is superbly crafted, the score is sensational and is still haunting even in today's standards. The casting is perfect, the pacing of the narrative immerses the viewer inside the possession. Even if you feel you are desensitized to the genre, this film will cause nightmares and sleepless nights. It is the most timeless horror movie of all time that painting the scenario for the true story of a real-life exorcism. It was the highest grossing R-rated horror film of all time. It received critical acclaim, becoming the first horror film to be nominated for an Academy Award for Best Picture, and also has the distinction of winning over devout Christians and loyal Satanists alike. That alone is a remarkable achievement in and of itself. Money Gang, do you agree on my list? Which one of these scary movies gave you sleepless nights? I want to know your answer, so share with me in the comments down below. I'll make sure to reply to every single comment that is posted within the first hour. If you found this video hair-raising, I know you'll have fun watching my video about top 10 high school movie fights. High school and gang fights, which movies are the best at putting these two together? Peace.